Hi guys, my name is Caitlin and this is KDB Reads. All right, so today I am going to talk about, wrap up, review the four books that I read in February and it was a pretty good month. Um, I enjoyed three out of the four books that I read, so doing pretty good, 75% success rate there. So let's go ahead and get into it. So for a classic this month, I read Emma by Jane Austen, which I don't remember if I've ever read this all the way through. I know I have read most of it through. I know the story because I've watched, you know, all of the movies and mini series and everything like that. Um, but if I have read it all the way through, it's been, gosh, probably at least 10 years. So it was really fun to go back and read it. I love Jane Austen's writing. Her books are just kind of a like cozy, comforting, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it was really nice, especially in winter, to read these books where it's just kind of about society and crushes and who's marrying whom and stuff like that. Um, but one of the things about Emma that just kind of surprised me this time around is as I was reading it, I was really surprised that I like the character Emma, her as a character, because at first glance it seems like I would just be annoyed with her. She's very pretentious, she cares a lot about social class and rank and who it's appropriate to associate with and not. Um, she jumps to conclusions, as big. there's just like a lot that would seem annoying to me, but I don't find her annoying. And so I started thinking about that when I was about halfway through. Of like. Why, why do I like this character so much? And I think it was a couple of things. First of all, it really helps that you see how much care and consideration she has for like her father, who basically has crippling anxiety, like even though they don't, they don't call it that, but he's nervous about absolutely everything. And she takes such care of him and his feelings that it does a lot to like soften her. But then even more than that, I think the biggest thing that makes me like her is that she is so willing to humble herself when she's wrong. Like as several times in the book she's wrong about who is in love with whom and, and just she's so wrong about so many things and as soon as she finds out she's wrong she instantly admits it. She's instantly ashamed of, of things that she's done because of that. She apologizes um, and I think that's just such an underrated quality. Uh, in characters and in people in real life to be able to just admit when you have been wrong and not make excuses for yourself and just say, you know what, I was so wrong, I'm sorry, and to move on. So I just, it was refreshing. It was so nice to read that. So I had a lot of fun with that. Um, a new Emma movie just came out, which is why I chose this book. So I'm probably going to go see that in the next week or two. Um, I think I'm going to go with my mom and maybe my sister because we really enjoy those. So Emma was a lot of fun to read. That was the last one that I finished though because it was kind of long. I will say, you know, obviously it, it drags a little bit because it's written in a different kind of dialogue than what you're used to reading. Now the book that I read that came out within the last 12 months, I listened to as an audiobook and it was called The Candle and the Flame. So let me pull it up on here. Um, and this was the one that I didn't really like. Um, it wasn't bad. I guess it it was just kind of meh. That's like that's the only way I can describe this book. I, I honestly, it was the first book I finished. I think I finished it in the first week, so it was a quick read. And I don't remember most of what happened. So you have um, the main character of Fatima and she lives in this big bustling city and there are jinn who are there as like protectors but also not and like their powers they have powers but they're kind of confusing it was like they're fast and strong and they can like teleport basically i think they didn't call it teleporting but like get from one place to another really quickly um and they have fire like the fire is what gives them magic and somehow fatima has fire in her. Um, and so it's just, 
it was an interesting read. I really liked some things about it. I liked that it was set in a very eclectic society and it was, um, I feel like uh, Muslim and Hindu were the prevailing religions. So I think it's nice and refreshing to read something that's not, you know, like Christian as the default. Um, so there were some interesting parts to it, but again, like I can't, I can't remember most of the book. It just, I don't know. There, there was supposed to be like mystery and intrigue and war and all this stuff. I, I don't know if it was just too much packed into it or what, but it was just, it was not my favorite. One of the things I do remember that was pretty annoying was there were so many times when various characters would talk about how a woman is not a piece of property. Um, a woman can do what she wants, like all like making these like hard statements, feminist statements. And like, don't get me wrong, I'm a feminist, I'm on board with that. But it was weird because they were trying to set up this world and the city that she lives in as this all inclusive, all viewpoints and all religions and all everything is very much accepted, but women are still treated like property and still fighting that fight, which I guess is maybe not totally unrealistic, but I guess I just would have preferred if they had, instead of having a character outrightly state those things, just, you know, had situations. I guess like the show don't tell is basically what I'm thinking. So, um, it, again, it wasn't a terrible book. It was just, I guess the fact that I can't remember a lot about it <laughs> says how much I think of it. So there you go. Um, the other book I listened to was the children's book and that one was called Nooks and Crannies and it was by, uh, Jessica Lawson and I loved this book. It was so cute. It was such an adorable book. It was like, um, it was like Willy Wonka meets Matilda meets, um, like Agatha Christie's and then there were none. Like. I don't know, it was like a mix of those three books. It was so cute. The main character, Tabitha, um, her parents are horrible to her and she gets invited to this wealthy woman's house. She's not a countess, I can't remember, but she's some sort of nobility along with five other children and then the children start to disappear. Tabitha has a pet mouse named Pemberley. It's so cute. But there were a couple times I teared up in this book just because of how horrible, like, Tabitha's parents treat her. They're just, they're just so mean. I remember at one point pausing it and telling my husband, Josh, like if, if somebody doesn't hug her and tell her that they love her by the end of this book, I'm going to just, I'm going to throw my phone out the window, but it's a, it's a happy ending for her without any spoilers. It, it was so cute. I think it's just a fun little read. There's enough mystery there. I feel like I figured out most of the mystery, um, you know, by, about a third of the way through, but you know, I'm an adult, so I don't, I don't know if kids would find it more mysterious or not. And even though I, I pretty much knew most of how it was going to turn out, it was still so enjoyable to read. I think that the writing was just so cute. I loved the audiobook, um, or that voice actor who did the narration did such a good job. It was so easy to list, it was so easy to listen to. It, it was just really, really fun. So. Um, I highly recommend Nooks and Crannies. It was just, it was so, so cute. And then my last book, which was the wild card, was Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw. And this one I enjoyed as well. Um, I had been given for Christmas the third, this is part of a, a series, a trilogy, and I'd been given the third book um, because my husband thought it was the kind where you could read it out of order and you might be able to, I'm not sure. I'm going to keep reading the series. So I'll see, but like just me personally, I couldn't start with the third book of a series, even if it didn't matter what order you read them in. So, um, this is about centers around Dr. Greta Helsing. And so it's, she is from like the Van Helsing, you know, which is vampire hunter line, but she is a doctor for the undead, um, so vampires, werewolves, mummies, I think ghouls or goblins. I think it's ghouls that are in this book. Um, and these monks all of a sudden start going out and killing 
a lot of undead creatures and humans alike. And so her and a couple of vampire friends and so just there's kind of a band of, you know, misfits who all know about the underworld start looking into it. Um, so I really liked it. I liked the the concept of the book and everything. One of the things that surprised me about this though was that not as much of it is told from um, Greta's point of view as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was pretty much going to be from her point of view the whole way through, but I would say only about half of it is. You go between all of the different characters and what they're experiencing, what they're seeing. Um, and there were a lot of times when she wasn't as essential to the plot, I think, as a main character should be. Like if they're if they're centering centering it around her and you know saying it's a Greta Helsing novel, then I feel like she should be more of the focal point. I also wish that there had been more scenes of her doing practice, like the everyday kind of practice. So there was a lot of like high drama, high intense situation with the, the killings that were going on, the attacks. But I also kind of wish we had gotten to see more of her in just like her everyday clinical setting with various creatures and how she was treating them because those were really fascinating because they, she, um, Vivian Shaw wrote in there kind of some of the procedures and the scientific background that, you know, she made up for treating these different uh, creatures and I thought that was really interesting so I'm gonna continue reading it next month I'm gonna read the second one um, I have to go pick that up from the library today but I thought it was really good overall I enjoyed it it was a pretty fast read um, really interesting it definitely subverts a lot of the supernatural type tropes um, and embraces some of them too so that's really nice so those were my books for February I really enjoyed you know three out of the four of them and even the candle in the flame was fine it, it wasn't that bad but I was happy to be done with it and ready to move on to other books uh, I have four new books ready for March I've already picked them all out I have all but one of them that I have to go pick up from the library and I'm so excited I'm having so much fun reading through all these books this year and sometimes I feel kind of bad because I'm like, well, it's only four books. And I see so many people, especially on booktube, reading, you know, like 16 books in a month. But honestly, just for my life, that's just not, that's not plausible. I could list a whole bunch of them, but I wouldn't get to all of them. So I think I'm really enjoying doing four. I'm going to keep up with that um, and see how it goes. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have read any of these books, please let me know what you think of them and if you have any book recommendations for future months just let me know that as well and thank you so much have a great day